Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at a PS3 B model. Um, yeah, PS1. Um, so console's working fine. Powered on. Um, it's backwards because if you look here, the LAN port is broken. So there's like a pin busted up in there and then it's busted here. There it is, powered on, so it does work. Basically, this should be a pretty f quick one. Um, never done one before, but the plan is I have tons and tons of broken COK boards. So I'm going to remove a LAN port from another board, remove it from this board, and just replace it. I think it should be pretty straightforward. I'm going to use my quick, uh, probably no nozzle 500C. Pretty high airflow. Gonna tin. I'm gonna tin the points with lighted solder so it melts quicker. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's the plan for this one. Should be short. Should be simple. But as you guys see, that's never usually the case. So yeah, let's um put you guys up and just kind of get onto it. Alrighty. So board's taken apart. I'm just zoomed into the LAN port. So this is the area. Basically, what I want to do is tin all these points with some leaded solder so that way it just flows off easy and then I'm gonna hit it from this exact angle and I'll just tap on it with tweezers until it falls off and hopefully that'll do it This or hear this that you used to go up on Mulholland Drive and park yeah, every night and visualize seeing yourself as yeah I would visualize uh, yeah I would this visualize, is when you were broken for you know, right having alrighty so we got our old port removed so this is it right here um I wish I could show you guys um you won't be able to see, maybe there there's like a pin right here that's bent and it's broken over here. Um, did kind of the same process, remove one from a dead motherboard that I had. So here's a good looking one. Pins are still intact, all that fun stuff. Motherboard is, where am I, here, here we go. Uh, it's kind of prepped, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how it looks. It's kind of good to go, so I'm thinking we just flow it back down from bottom like we would with the HDMI port when it gets hot. So yeah. Several days later. Alrighty, uh, we're back. It's been a, a few weeks, I think. Um, essentially, I gave up on this. So, after you guys saw me replace the, the Ethernet port, um, I was getting green light of death. Thought it was RSX. Swapped it out. So you guys have seen me do the Frankies before. Swapped it out with a 65 nanometer. Still was getting green light of death. Swapped it again. Decided to look at the board and buy the AV port. Um, there's like these diodes I guess um it was missing them I was looking at another board put them on and it works been testing it for two two-ish days and I got this weird like error thing happening where is it gonna act up for the video we'll find out <laughs> um so sometimes it looks like it wants power on and then it just kind of gets stuck it's like right now it's 
literally not gonna power on. Um, but if I mess around, like, I turn it off and I turn it back on, it'll work. Sometimes I get 1002, 1001, so as you see, like, right now, it's not gonna power off. Um, but I mean, other than this weird, like, pirate issue, it works fine otherwise. Like, if I reset the video, yeah, see, that usually brings it back. So what I think it is, is during the multiple, so it, it, it clearly works. Um, I've tested it with Last of Us for like many hours and yeah, it's just like on power off, it powers off fine and then it kind of kicks off. I'll show you everything I did. Um, I think it has something to do with my tents. So I honestly think it's because I've reflowed and we balled so much they might there might be like cold joints or whatever so i'm going to touch these up and then there's some miscellaneous caps for the power power oh sorry power rails on the other side that i'll also swap out i do them from time to time but this one i don't remember if i did or not so if i didn't i'll do that but yeah let's just take this apart and kind of do those and see what happens
Alrighty, after a uh, brief soldering session, let's power it on and see what happens. Oop. No yellow light of death there. Which is always good. Um, will we get display out? I don't have a hard drive in there, which probably also, you know, isn't helping my situation, but basically, just gonna turn on and reset the display real quick. And then we should have display. Hopefully. Maybe. Display. No display. Um, hmm. Oh, there we go. Whoops. <laughs> and we have display. Well, my screen's recording as display, but I'm getting no signal. Um, hmm. Let's try that again. See, and now we're back to this weird, uh, yellow light of death that I was talking about that it just doesn't want to do anything um not sure why ooh and I'm not even in focus um but here we go again see it just kind of conks out and I know it's a 1002 cause I read the syscon codes after I want to try a different power supply real quick let's drop it on my power supply just to see if it's that or something but we'll see no, see, we're still getting this weird yellow light of death, and I don't really know how to explain it, because... Yeah, it, it just randomly decides it wants to work, and then it randomly decides it doesn't. Which is very weird, because, like, if I let it sit here for a few minutes, it'll work, but then if I don't, it won't. I don't know, um, gonna poke around a bit more and see if I can figure it out. Alrighty, um, console back together, let's see if it works. That's positive over there at least. So we get video. Oh, we aren't gonna get video because I didn't plug in the HDMI cable. However, do I expect that to happen? There we go. Video? Video. Video, come on. It wants it it, it wants to oh. it wanted to do it. Um Let's see if this yellow light issue persists. So usually that's what happens, like... It'll power on, it'll be... It'll be like, stuck in this weird position, and then like... If I just do a video reset, usually that fixes it. Um, but I have a feeling this time it's gonna yellow light to death. And then if I leave it alone and I plug it back on, it'll work. Yeah, see? Yellow light of no it's gonna it's gonna work i guess i don't know this is where the, this console gets kind of funky um i need to do a video reset <laughs> that's what i need to do right now There we go, video reset. I don't know why that one took so long. Um, and then it should, yeah, see? And then it comes up fine now. Because I think it's fine. Yeah, see, so okay. Okay, we're back in business. So I don't think this justifies enough of it. Ooh, sorry. Justifies enough of it working. But basically what I want to do now, I'm gonna put it back together test it for like three ish more days i guess and see what happens but at least that's a positive sign just now with the whole finger touching it's because my finger was like barely on it but yeah usually that's what happens so i don't know um yeah we'll just continue testing and we'll come back in a few days and see how it goes 
one long angry line later. One eternity later. Alrighty guys, so it's been a uh, few months, a few weeks, months, I don't remember. Um, we got the B01 working. So this is the same B01. It had the Ethernet issues that I fixed. Then I had the RSX issues that I fixed. Uh, long story short, what I did was, and this is it fully working, so, uh, you know, just to show you guys, Ethernet is working, those are the temps. It now has a 40 nanometer RSX pulled from a slim. CPU temps are good, RSX temps are also good. FAT 32, I did the whole testing on Last of Us for like a week straight, so we're good to go on that. Essentially, um, do I have another board? Uh, I guess we can use this screen. So when I had uh, pulled the Ethernet port, I essentially knocked off, and I might have covered this before, uh, this guy, this like transistor over here, and that was giving me green, not green light of death, but I guess green light of death, it was booting into SBUART and bring up internal Syscon uh, logs, but nothing was coming out, so I put this back after putting a, a 65 nanometer, and it booted perfectly fine. Um, worked for a day or two and then started glitching out, and it was kind of the same thing. Reflowed it as you guys saw, did the tantalizers, replaced the tantalizers, all that, and it still wouldn't work. Ended up putting a 40 nanometer, had to touch up the diagonal resistor, and now it works. So, all in all, long journey to get it, um, e to get an Ethernet port going, and partially it was my fault. I should have paid more attention, but you live and you learn. So, once again, V01, Ethernet port back there, connected over, over there, so it's working. As you guys saw, it has an IP address. It's on 4.90 EvilNet. And yeah, good to go. So another, I guess, successful one kind of done. 
As always, if you guys like this kind of stuff or find it interesting or have any questions, comments, concerns, leave it down below. Like, comment, subscribe, I guess. That's always useful. And yeah, I'll leave links to everything that I do. Services that you can reach out to that offer these services since I don't. And yeah, see you guys in the next one. See ya. Can't fall to sleep while my chest keeps